All right, Shalom, when the beginning is lesson, but giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Waha, Raka, Kudash, which in the ancient Hebrew tongue would be the correct names of the Heavenly Father, His beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit. I also would like to give double honors to my teachers, the head apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much due honors and respect to the sincere brethren out there that's also laboring in his work. And as always, want to say shalom to the believers. You know, the Akim as well as the Akwath, which will be you brothers along with the sisters that subscribe to this truth as well. So yeah, pretty much the spirit is on me once again to go into another quick lesson. You know, when you consider any of you out there who claim to build your foundation off the Holy Scriptures from whatever denomination, you know, starting here with this Israelite thing, even... <laughs> to you so-called Christians. Well, if your approach to the Bible is sincere, which you actually have <laughs> sincere so-called Christians out there, now they're sincerely wrong, yet they're sincere. And again, if this is their approach, then the overall objective should be to desire mercy. Again, no matter what denomination you might derive from, if your approach is sincere, then your desire should be to receive mercy, you know, from the one you know as God or Jehovah, <laughs> whom we know to be Yahweh. all right? That's the correct name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. True name would be Yahweh Shah, all right? Which we found out that that mercy that can only come from those entities is fastened, if you will, or cemented by way of the Heavenly Father revealing Himself through his only begotten son in the form of the proper knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the scriptures. <laughs> That's how mercy is cemented by the Lord revealing himself. Now, when you go right here, to the book of Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter, and starting at the first verse, it captures, you know, this idea of mercy being cemented, if you will, by the Lord revealing himself, which will ultimately be manifested when all hell break loose and overall when a destruction take place. You know, that's why the scriptures say, he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. But the beginning stages, if you will, the first phase of this process is the Lord revealing himself. See? This is how you embark, if you will, on that road that leads to mercy in your pursuit to, uh, you know, receiving mercy from the Heavenly Father through His Son, well, it starts with the Lord revealing this truth unto you. See? Which brings me right here to Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter, starting at the first verse. It says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time <laughs> while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison. See? And, and this can be applied to this very day. You know? We're yet in the place of our captivity. America is nothing more than a prison for the children of Israel. Yet the Lord sent forth his word, you know, despite the current state, you know, that we find ourselves in. Matter of fact, let me grab some real quick and we're going to go back. Right here in the book of Psalms. Chapter 105. And starting at verse 17, it says, He sent the man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant. Yeah, and we know the story of Joseph. You know, he was sold by his brothers into slavery. But this precept, when read through spiritual lenses, you will see that this is a foreshadowing of now. In fact, when you go into that word Joseph, or that name, should I say Joseph, it translates to Israel overall, okay? Matter of fact, let's prove that, and we're going to go back. This is the book of Psalms, the 80th chapter. And the first verse, it says, Give ear, shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock. <laughs> See, let's read this again. It says, Give ear, shepherd of Israel, Thou that leadest Joseph <laughs> like a flock. See that? Thou that dwellest between the cherubims, 
shine forth. So you see here where the name Joseph is in the same breath with Israel and pretty much interchangeable in relation to context. That's why when you read the book of Amos, the fifth chapter, I believe around the 15th verse, it tells you how the Lord would be gracious to the remnant of Joseph, which translates to the remnant of Israel. So when you read the story of Joseph being sold into captivity, that's actually a foreshadowing to the current state of the nation of Israel. It serves as a testimony, if you will. Matter of fact, let's get that real quick before we continue. This is the book of Psalms, the 81st chapter. And starting at the fifth verse, it says, This he ordained in Joseph for a testimony. <laughs> yeah, let's read this again. It says, This he ordained in Joseph for a testimony. So again, when you read the story of Joseph being sold into captivity, it serves as a foreshadowing, as we read in here, a testimony, if you will, in which we are to consider, as it is written in the book of Romans, the 15th chapter in the fourth verse, the things written aforetime were written for our learning. See? Again, this he ordained in Joseph for a testimony when he went out through the land of Egypt, <laughs> where I heard a language that I understood not. I removed his shoulder from the burden. His hands were delivered from the pots. <laughs> See? And guess what? This would extend to this lifetime. Just like our Lord removed Joseph's shoulder from the burdens and his hands were delivered from the pots, well, that will apply to us. We will be delivered from the pots as well, <laughs> which in this case would be the great melting pot, which is America, Babylon the Great. See that? But it all started with the Lord revealing himself in the form of sending forth his word. See that? So when you go back here again to Psalms chapter 105, and again, starting at verse 17, it says, He sent the man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, see, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron. <laughs> he was laid in iron until the time that his word came. Let's read this again. It says, Whose feet they hurt with fetters, he was laid in iron, all right, that yoke of iron. <laughs> it says, until <laughs> the time that his word came. See that? The word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free, which is the ultimate act of mercy. You know, the Lord delivering us from under the foot of our oppressors. See? So just like the Lord sent forth, you know, and loosed Joseph, right? The Lord will also extend that same act of kindness, that mercy, if you will, to his elect here in his lifetime. And just like then, now, it all starts with the Lord revealing himself by sending forth his word. See? Which brings us back full circle, if you will, to what we open up with right here. In the book of Jeremiah, the 33rd chapter. And again, starting at the first verse, it says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time. <laughs> Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison. And again, we read the story of Joseph, how he was sold into captivity, how he was laid in iron until <laughs> the word of the Lord came and loosed him. Well, we reading right here where that same word came unto Jeremiah while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison. Well, guess what? That applies to now. Here in the place of our captivity, America, Babylon the Great, which is nothing more than a prison for the children of Israel, where the Lord in a show of mercy has once more sent forth his word. See, again, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus said the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it to establish it, the Lord is his name. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee, or reveal, and show thee 
great and mighty things. And what are these great and mighty things? Well, simply put, the prophecies for those of you who have been given eyes to see and ears to hear, those of you who subscribe to the testimony of our Lord Yahweh Shah, which is the spirit of prophecy pursuant to the book of Revelation, the 19th chapter in the 10th verse. Well, that's nothing more than the Lord showing unto you great and mighty things. For an example, you being exposed to the fate of this place, America, Babylon the Great, and the fact that the Lord has purposed the violent overthrow of America in effort to take down the wicked, the so-called white man. Well, that's the Lord showing unto you great and mighty things. See, again, call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things, see, which thou knowest not. Yeah, prior to being exposed to this form of teaching, we knew nothing. See that? Verse 4, it says, For thus saith the Lord, the power of Israel, concerning the houses of this city, and concerning the houses of the kings of Judah, which are thrown down by the mounts and by the sword, they come to fight with the Chaldeans, but it is to fill them with the dead bodies of men whom I have slain in mine anger and in my fury, and for all whose wickedness I have hid my face from this city. Yeah, and this also applies to this very day when the scriptures say that we was thrown down by the mounts and by the sword, that translates to Esau. <laughs> Esau contributed to the falling away of the children of Israel, thus fulfilling the prophecy spoken of in the book of Second Thessalonians, the second chapter. What the scriptures tell you, that will be a falling away first before that great and notable day of our Lord, Yahweh Shah. And that started around, what, 70 AD, where we was chased out of our lands by the Romans, you know, into the interiors of uh, the west coast of Africa, most famously, where later we was rounded up and brought over here to America, Babylon the Great, to serve hard bondage under the foot of our oppressors. Well, that's a form of us being thrown down by the mounts and by the sword. See? Verse 6, it says, Behold, I will bring it health and cure, <laughs> and I will cure them. So the Lord said, eventually, he will cure us from these wounds. You know, when you read the parable of Lazarus and the rich man, it tells you how Lazarus laid at the gate of the rich man, which translates to America, full of sores. And those wounds, if you will, was the results of slavery. See? Well, guess what the Lord said? He would heal us of those wounds and cure us. Again, it says, Behold, I will bring it health and cure, and I will cure them. And how would the Lord begin this process? Well, let's read on. It says, And will reveal, and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. Let's read this again. It says, Behold, I will bring it health and cure, and I will cure them, and will reveal, and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. See that? So that's the first steps if you will, in this road to recovery. That's the chronological order before ultimately the Lord manifests his mercy in delivering us from this destruction. He will reveal unto us his truth, man. He will send his word forth. See, that's the chronological order right there. That pretty much cements and staples, if you will, this mercy that the Lord promised to his elect. It will be you know, cemented by where the Lord giving us this truth, revealing unto us hidden things. See? Which brings me right here. To the book of Psalms, chapter 107. And starting at the 19th verse, it says, Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. He saved them out of their destructions. Yeah, and this trouble right here will ultimately be manifested in the form of what the scriptures have coined as the time of Jacob's trouble, which is fast approach. Well, guess what? There are certain spirits here on the planet Earth that's going to call out to the Heavenly Father in that trouble, and he's going to deliver them out of those distresses. And how would the Lord go about establishing that salvation, if you will? Well, let's read on. It says he sent his word. <laughs> See, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Yeah, let's read this again. He sent his word, which again is the first step, if you will, on his road to recovery. He sent his word and healed them 
and delivered them, see, and delivered them from their destructions, which in this case would be the deliverance from this destruction of this place, America, Babylon the Great. <laughs> see? But again, what established that salvation? The Lord sent his word. He gave you insight concerning his plans and purposes concerning the overthrow of Babylon the Great, which that was the case in the time of Noah in the old world, which we often harp on and rightfully so. Even our Lord Yahweh Shai made comparisons, you know, uh, concerning the parallels of those two worlds, the days of Noah and the time that we're in now. And again, what established Noah's salvation? Well, the Lord sent forth his word. He gave him insight. <laughs> He revealed unto him hidden things. He briefed him, you know, pretty much warned him concerning his judgment that he had prepared for that time, which came in the form of the flood. <laughs> See? Well, guess what? That applies to now, which gives credence to the idea of mercy <laughs> being cemented, being fashioned, if you will, by way of the Lord revealing himself and exposing you to this truth, you know, sending forth his word. See? which is actually the ultimate act of mercy. So y'all just wanted to touch on that, Lord willing. It was edifying. Till the next time I say, Shalom.